Hello, loves. This is what I was playing around with in the last few days, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, it started out without this can on the bottom, and it was just, I wanted to make some little holiday ornaments using patterns, using the graphics specifically off the front of patterns. And I was looking for some more retro, uh, more 50s, 60s, but a um, little tricky to find. I did find some, but I ended up using some, this one I think is 80s, um, partly because apparently sewing is for white ladies and their white children. It's really hard to find patterns, especially older ones, that feature people of a variety of skin tones. And I kind of wanted to be inclusive there, so there was that. It's also really hard to find ones that have boys. Um, nobody sews for their little boys, or apparently ever did. And thinking back, yeah, my brothers wore striped t-shirts and denim jeans from Sears and grandma and Aunt Rose and mom sewed for us girls. So whatever the case is, it may be tricky to find exactly the um, exactly the artwork you want on vintage patterns, but we'll get into that in a minute. Anyway, just a fun little project. It was all about the patterns and so then it had to have some rickrack and kind of went on the sewing theme and I was like, do I just cut them out and hang them up as little ornaments? But no, it needed more substance. So I made them a little stand and then I glued the little stand onto the lid of, and it's a little tricky getting the lid off just because it doesn't want to flex with all that glued on top, but onto the lid of an empty cocoa tin. And now it's not only a cute holiday decoration, it's a gift box. So I'll show you how I did it. I hope that you will play along. So I'm gonna show you the materials used and you can go gather them up and make along or you can just watch and make it some other time. And I'll get this out of the way. This is a great um, piece. I, because I'm using graphics from patterns, I kind of went with a fabric-y theme throughout. You wouldn't have to. There's lots of other ideas, which I'm sure I won't be able to shut up. I'll have to tell you all of those too, and then some, because more will come to me as I go. So I'm gonna set this puppy aside, and let's see, the bare basics of what you need. For the base, I used an empty ribbon spool, and they come in different sizes. One thing to note is that some ribbon spools like your base is way in there, you would end up with all of this area here that might need some sort of embellishment, which might not be bad. I mean, you could pile buttons and bells and pom-poms and things like that in there um, and create a whole second tier of embellishment to it. But just be aware, different ones are different depths, even though they look the same on top there's a lot more in. And the ones that have more overhang tend to get bent up a little bit more. Um, so there's that. So you'll need a base. You will need, I'll try to stick to just the basics and then I'll give you all the options. You really got to plan this out. I did plan this out. I've got to stick to the plan. That would be good. Okay, so you need a base. You're going to want some scrapbook paper to cover. Bring this back over. You're gonna want some scrapbook paper. That's what's covering here. And then if you do a canister as well, you might use the same below. So you may only need just a circle as big as this if you're only doing this portion of it. Or you may want a, more of a, at least half sheet to do the rest of the can. So there's that. Um, you will need a sewing pattern that's got a graphic you like. And I picked this one because it had boys and girls and 
Um, I might get two different uh, ones out of it, or I might use all four of these kids on one. I probably won't use the little boy in blue. Um, he just doesn't coordinate. <laughs> who invited him to the Christmas pictures? Jeez, there's always got to be that one person who doesn't wear the outfit. Fine. Okay, so you'll need that. You are going to want some sort of ribbon to go back on the ribbon spool. Um, it could be that you buy a spool of ribbon, you pull off most of the ribbon and just leave some. Um, you may want to use a solid color ribbon so that you can then put some rickrack over the top. I'm super fond of rickrack right now. Now my problem is my solid color ribbons that I have do not fit the empty spools that I have. So choices may have to be made. Mm, could happen. So you got some ribbon. You maybe got some rickrack if you're into that. And a lot of these ribbons are dollar store. If you live in a tiny town like I do and don't have a sewing store, um, dollar store has a nice selection of ribbon. And although it's not as cheap as buying it in bulk off of Mega Mart Online, um, $1.25 for nine feet of ribbon is not a horrible price. You can get a lot of crafts out of that. So you've got that and that. You will need a glue. I use tacky glue for most things. I did this sample. I used tacky glue all the way through to see if it could be done. And yes, it can, except for the part where you might want to glue trim to the plastic rim of your container if you do the container part below. Um, I used hot glue for that. You can use other hardware store kinds of glues for that. And I've just realized my camera is catching off of the table. Let me see if I can zoom just a hair. Go the right direction? No, wrong direction. Eh, hair, hair, there, okay. We've got everything we need. And the front of me is off camera because we don't need that on there. Okay. So let's say I've got you through that. You need scissors. You will probably want an X-Acto knife and a cutting mat. If you don't have, you can cut most everything you need with scissors and leave some of the background bits in. Um, it's just a little easier to do it with an X-Acto knife not comfortable with an exacto you don't have to and again on the glue you can do everything with tacky glue you don't have to have hot glue but I will be using hot glue this time if you've got a compass for circle drawing you may find that it comes in handy for the most part you can just draw around your ribbon spool and that's going to do all you need but there may be spots where you want to have one so handy to have a glue spreader card um, looks suspiciously like a gift card, but uh, yeah, nobody refilled the Papa Murphy's gift card, so yeah, it's a glue spreader. Fine, don't love me. I do have, just off camera, a damp terry cloth rag sitting on a plate. It's on a plate so that it's less likely that it will touch anything paper on my worktop um, and get the paper soggy and make me sad. You may want an old... Christmas card for a background. When I first did this piece, it didn't have the Christmas tree in the background, but I thought it looked a little bit bare. So I went searching through my stash of old Christmas cards. I do keep a small basket of those and found one that was a tree. It's surprising how few Christmas cards just have a tree. Um, but there were some other options and I'll show you those when we get to it. So that, and then you will need some cardstock to back your pieces to make them stiffer because of course that would be too flimsy. Now on this one, I did use poster board left over from another project, but in getting it out this morning, I pulled out a scrap of this. It's not as neon as it looks on camera, or at least as it looks on camera right now. Maybe it won't come across that way in the video, but um, 
This is just a golden yellow. Anyway, I was gonna use this and I realized that the dollar store poster board is really barely heavier than cardstock now. It used to be a good bit thicker. So I'm gonna have to invest in some thicker poster board next time I'm someplace else in the world so that I have some regular weight poster board for things. But cardstock clearly will work just fine for this. And that said, if you wanted to use foam core to back these and make them thicker, you certainly could and it adds some substance it's not necessary on this project. And if you do use foam core for a project like this, the kind they sell at dollar stores is not the same quality as art store foam core. And you want art store foam core if you're gonna go to that bother because the Dollar Tree kind does not cut nicely. Now, other things you may want, you may want some buttons to embellish if you're going, if you're taking off on that pattern theme and going with the whole sewing thing, you may want some buttons. Um, if that's not so important to you, you may want some jingle bells or some pom-poms or things like that. So, that's basically all you need. To get started, it's pick a pattern. And I did raid both of the local thrift stores in the last week and pulled out these some of them are just super sweet. And these are all just pretty much kid patterns. This one looked like another good one, um, but again, 80s. This one looks real tempting to use. Um, not so sure it's a boy, but androgynous anyway. Um, that's a sweet one and the rickrack caught my attention, but I decided for holiday, it was like, mm, where I live, Christmas is snowy. Some others in other colors. I was really thinking of more of this iconic look like this, but just didn't fall in love with any of the images for doing this Christmas thing. I am going to make some junk journals covered in some of these patterns. Probably, um, um, do I have them out? I don't have them out. Well, anyway, I've got some that are like classic women in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, so that's going to be my next video. So if you're watching this a bit later than, what is it, early November of 2023, um, there may be a video right after this that has... Uh, junk journal project with those because yeah I'm kind of hooked on patterns right now I think I said that yeah you may also want your morning coffee you may want to actually drink your morning coffee excuse me a moment Get my brain cells <clears throat> vibrating at proper speed so to get started I'm gonna need this image glued down. So I'll get on that. I do like to use a piece of parchment to keep from smearing glue everywhere. You can also, if I don't have parchment handy, I'll just use scrap paper, anything, just so I'm not smearing glue places I don't want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the guts here. Now, the guts of these patterns are good for all sorts of other um, paper arts projects, so I do not throw those away. Um, pattern tissue also can make really cute gift wrap, so if you're putting together a gift package and putting something in this container other than food, because these have clearly been handled you know, many times by who knows who, I assume germs have died by now, but I probably wouldn't pack it around cookies or anything, but uh, unless it was uncut. If it was uncut pattern paper, I probably would. But um, it can make cute, um, just fluff for inside a gift package, aside from all the other decoupage things that you can do with it. 
and see all the lovely graphic things you can do with that some other time. Get that out of the way. And so I've done that. I'm going to go ahead and cut this apart. I'll just, I'll cut it kind of down to size, glue it down, and then cut it out better. And yes, I am going to just leave this run as I do this. So you are going to have to bear with everything. My editing skills combined with the editing software that I have just makes it really difficult to do much with that. So for now, aside from the bare basics, it's pretty much unedited video. And that may be the reason that I take this down to just doing two of the figures too, so you don't have to watch me cut everything out. Now this over here, where I cut this off, and I've lost part of this child's arm, there's all kinds of things you can do um, to put something else in in place of that, make it look as if the child is holding up like a little sign that says something dangling from their hand so the sign is hanging in front of their arm when they're doing that there's ways to do that i did cut you know whatever is in the foreground i cut to that side um, and then this little guy can be for something else somewhere else at some point so there's that so I'm going to go ahead, even though I may use these as two separate groups, I'm going to go ahead and just glue them down as they are. Ideally, glue them down and leave them sit to dry for a little while. Um, it makes the cutting process nicer. I'm going to give that plenty of glue, but try not to overdo it. Yesterday I was scooching glue everywhere. That was a mess. I may be overdone today too, but we'll see. I just want to make sure I have a really good even layer. Now I am using Eileen's Techie. I have a few other glues on order, so videos shortly after this may start recommending other things. Eileen's Techie does bubble in a lot of cases. I don't for the most part mind that. Um, in this case, it looks like it's gonna be just fine. Glossy magazine pages seem to bubble worse with it. And I think that's because the porosity of the paper is much less and the, the liquid has time to do weird things. I don't know. I don't know the science of it. And I've missed that edge right there. Just wiping some glue off of my card back underneath that edge. Okay, that's glued down. And then I think I'm going to want this tree behind. And this card would be stiff enough as it is, but it's got a Christmas letter on it. And I used to save all these because, oh, you know, it's wonderful to have these memories. But, uh, yeah, this has been sitting around since 1985 or some such. And see, I'm not going to fussy cut that too much yet. Just take off some of the extra. And I may decide that this is too bulky for what I've got going on. But I'll get it ready. And if I decide it's too bulky, we'll figure out something else. And I will be careful not to stick that down on my glue paper. Make sure my glue paper is dry. Just glue the edge of the card. Lots of things to keep track of. And I'm filming this on a Monday morning, which I should warn you. Um, the downtown restaurants get beer deliveries on Mondays, so 
and they park in the center of the street right in front of my building to deliver to just about everybody on the block. So it may all of a sudden get really noisy and I may have to give this up, but see, I just could not get things together well enough this weekend to film on Saturday morning when I intended to because I like to film on Saturday mornings and then upload. That's my whole plan. Sunday is the only really super quiet morning, but Sunday is my day to sew for me and to do other things. And I keep putting me stuff aside and I'm gonna change that. So I've got those glued down. I'll let those dry for just a moment and glue something else down. I can do the Thing. Now, I went through and played around with a few different scrapbook papers, and really what it came down to was, you know, knowing what my ribbon choices would probably be, um, and knowing what my background is, and knowing what my kids are. Things like this are probably too busy, but you may feel differently. Something like this I thought was kind of nice with the graphic and the kids because it looks like they're standing like on the living room carpet. Um, and so that's really tempting. Um, I just kind of wondered if I wanted more brightness by going with this golden yellow. And now I'm second guessing. Now I'm back to liking this better. I was thinking, yeah, that's too much red, and then if I put in like this, but I don't think I'm gonna use that. What am I gonna use for trims and ribbons? Ah, uh, ba dum bum bum. Ba -dum -da 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 do And these are, of course, a lot darker. Now, it didn't matter to me here. The red color on pattern packages, I, it never seems to be as dark as this. It's always kind of a light orangey red. So it coordinates nicely with this. And I'm seeing that again there. So <laughs> I'm gonna shift on the fly. I'm gonna switch out from this one. I'm going to go with this one and that's gonna change what's gonna go on here. Now I wanted to mention real quick, Real quick, <laughs> this is me. Let's see how quick I can do this. Okay, if you don't have a ribbon spool and you wanna make a project like this, but okay, it's not gonna be a ribbon spool, what else can you use? You can use a masking tape roll, an empty masking tape roll. I am one of those weird magpie people. If I start seeing something in multiples that's packaging, I will save it. I've got ribbon rolls. I've got tape. I used to be a professional mural painter. I have a ton of tape rolls because there's a whole bunch of them. I've done this since I was a kid. Um, project coming up. I've got all the empty boxes from canning lids and pectin from doing jam. So um, save those for an upcoming little uh, Christmas cottages thing. So there's those for round things. Now it doesn't have to be on a round thing the whole idea started with the ribbon spool and the ribbon and the pattern, right? Okay, but you could do, like I could do this lineup of kits on top of a gift box like this, and then that tree wouldn't be too big. And maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll switch on this one. You could do this, and I will talk about this and kind of show it to the side, but I might switch and put this on a gift box like this. You could do them, um, this is a Dollar Tree little cube. If you do just a single, you could do that. And this isn't a solid wooden block. This is actually made up of wood sides, so it's hollow in the center, so it's pretty lightweight. It's not super heavy, if that matters. Don't know that it will. Um, but you could do this and paint it, cover it in scrapbook papers, cover it in fabric, whatever you wanted. So you could do that. You could even, um, like these are the things that our tomatoes, our cherry tomatoes come in. How cute would that be? That'd make a cute little base. So there's all those options. So 
I'll leave that out. I'm gonna leave this one out for a moment because I may go that direction just so I can use all the kids. And I have different ribbon options that way too. I think I'm gonna do that, but I will demo this as well because it can be for a next one. I do have these little girls, I'm not gonna use her, she's a bit summery, but these two were off of the same, this is the same pattern as this. So I can set up this one for these gals. So I will do that while I'm at it. So for the one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna want this. For this one, I'm gonna want this. And did I just stick this paper, set it onto my glue paper? I did, ah. Uh, I'll do that. Christmas card background. Just thought about this. I did have a few other options. There are a few other things I could have done. Um, Santa in the background. The trick is to find a Christmas card that kind of has the same vintage look as your foreground graphics. And that was a little tricky. Um, but Santa could sit in the background this i looked at this i thought they'd be super cute in front of this except they'd be standing outside in their bare feet which i can see somebody doing a christmas photo that way but i decided not to do it to them um that a snowman and then i came across this if the whole pattern paper thing doesn't catch your heartstrings how cute would it be to take this little drummer mouse off of here take a tape roll Turn this tape roll into a little drum with this little mouse standing on top. That would just be stinking adorable. Or you could do it straight onto the top of a gift can by covering this. That would make an adorable gift. I might find a shorter one of these so it's more in proportion to be a drum. So it could just be the drum again. So that's a thought I'll probably make at some point. Thought I'd share that. So patterns aren't your only option. It's just what I'm playing with today. There's eight billion and then some options out there. Focus. Focus would be good. Let's see here. I don't think I put a pencil on the list of things you'll want. You'll want a pencil. Add that in there. And I do apologize for the lack of perfection here with prep and things, but if I have to do it perfectly, it just simply is never going to happen. And I love teaching and sharing, and I love the idea of sharing on YouTube. Um, just because I enjoy watching others on YouTube, it's really become what I do instead of TV. I don't actually own a TV. Um, when the last one died, well, seven or eight years ago, 10 years ago, I just never replaced it. And I don't really miss it. And when I just want to watch something, I find that there's so much content on YouTube without even having to subscribe and get the actual premium channels where you can watch movies and things. I don't have the attention span for most movies anyway. So, I'm just gonna go around and clean this off. Anyway, I enjoy watching YouTube, so I thought it would be fun to make some YouTube videos as a different way of teaching rather than in person or selling classes on, you know, Zoom classes. So I've got that. Um, if I know I'm not sticking it down to anything, I would probably cover the bottom too, just for prettiness when it is seen. Um, and so I would just hit that with some glue. Do this. Get 
I glued on there. Now some other things that I did do on the other piece, put this down. It will have a little bit of overhang unless you're really good at trimming that off in advance. You can trim it off, you can leave it, depends on how it looks to your eye. Um, for the moment, I'm not gonna worry about trimming it, but I probably would, and I will probably put one on the bottom for this too. Now, something else that I did on here, if you look fairly closely, I inked my edges. I like the look of inked edges. In this case, I took the ink all the way in because once I started putting things together, it just looked kind of dirty and not very nice on that rim. So that is an option you can do. For today, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, I'm gonna set this aside with the other little project and I'm gonna go ahead and put some paper on top of this one. And in this case, because I have that edge and I don't know for sure what I'm going to do. I'm working myself right into a corner here. I don't know for sure. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna cut my paper a little big and I'm gonna wrap it down across. I'm not gonna worry about wrapping the bottom. I don't wanna put stuff all the way up because it'll make it hard to put the lid on. So what I'll do is possibly let my ribbon on top be wider than the box top so it can hang down over. But we shall see when I get to that part. Because yes, I've gone off script. And so this time I will actually mark it on the back so I don't have to. I could finish sentences, that'd be nice. Okay. Now when I do this, I'm not going to worry about making it come way far all the way down. It just, it simply doesn't need to. And I definitely don't want to make it long enough to go down and wrap around the lid because again, it, that would tighten up how the lid fits. And if you don't happen to have an empty jewelry box, but you want one, again, this is another can be found at your dollar type stores. I just keep, I keep a big box of boxes, things that, packaging that comes in and now that I have studio space it's an enormous box of boxes but um, just kind of one of those handy things have a box somewhere that you toss those things into and then when it comes to crafting time you've got them and I'm just going to use a bone folder and score this real quick so that it folds easier if you don't have a bone folder one thing that can work just fine is the lid off of a ballpoint pen you can use that end that'll give you a pretty good score line too or if it's on the back of things you can actually just roll a ballpoint pen across it it's going to be on the back you're not going to see it just with some pressure and it just makes your fold go neater especially when you've got a slightly heavy paper and you've cut it down and am I being risky doing this on here, which is my gluing paper? Yes. I just stuck my arm in glue over here. That's what made me think to say that. Yeah, anyway. Definitely could have got the glue paper out of the way. Anyway, scoring it will make it fold nicer. And I did just sort of snip into the corners. I didn't want to cut across the corners and cut off because I would probably end up with a white corner showing and I'm hoping this way I will avoid that. If not, a dot from a marker will cover. Um, gluing 
putting something else on. Heaven knows I haven't got any glitter going in this project and it is glitter season. I probably won't do that today. I'm not, it's not quite glitter season. It's time to start making things. I'm not ready to decorate for the holidays. But for me, you know, this whole Yuletide thing, it's all in the making. Like, this is me celebrating the season right here. Um, this is part of my celebration. This isn't getting ready for it. This is what I do. I make stuff. Make things for my friends and my family. Make things to sell at the studio on Saturdays when I'm open. So yeah, if you are local to Baker City, Oregon, or passing through on your way from Boise to Portland, um, do stop in on a Saturday. I'm here, I'm open. Uh, open at noon, open for shopping and browsing until four o'clock. After four o'clock, it is open studio. I don't mind if shopper browser kind of people come in, um, but it is more for makers and if there are no makers in, or if those of us who are here are feeling like being cozier, I do close the curtains at about six, because it does feel like being in a fishbowl with everybody going to nearby restaurants and things, walking by and looking in. It can get a little weird feeling. Okay, get my glue paper out of the way this time, because then I got glue all over that. Set that aside. And I usually keep a couple of glue papers handy so that one can dry while the next one is being used. Okay, you. Try that again. I'm not. Get on there. Okay. And, you know, try not to get grubby little fingerprints inside the box because then you just end up with something else you have to <clears throat> cover up later. Pull those up. And if it's not quite sticking, because we're in a very dry climate. Eastern Oregon, if you think of Oregon and you're from somewhere else, you might think that it's wet and rainy like you think of Portland and the coast, um, that lush green rainforest Oregon. Yeah, Eastern Oregon is not that. We are actually classified as high desert. So um, think of those old westerns where the cowboys ride across the uh, sagebrush prairie and up into the Ponderosa pine forest. Some of those westerns are actually filmed around here, were years ago, not anymore. Um, but that's what Eastern Oregon is like. So it's a very dry climate. And I had discovered it's very different paper crafting here than it is over towards the coast. When I was on my little vacation this summer, I took some paper craft supplies with me and sitting in my campsite one afternoon, I sat there and did a little bit of art journaling. And boy, the effect of humidity on paper mm, and glue, that was interesting. So yeah, if you have trouble with paper materials, glue materials behaving the way that they do for people on YouTube videos, it could be something as simple as your humidity is completely different than it is wherever the person you're watching is filming from. Okay, that's glued in. That needs a little more right there. Righty. Okay, I'm liking that. And in the interest of, should I continue to let them dry? I think I can pick trims without having to have it already done. On the last one, I had them all cut out and glued on and then I started doing the trims. But I think in this case, 
I'm going to go ahead and do the trims first. Okay, get the dust out of there. And if I do get this all done and for some reason the gift box gets grungy, of course you can just paper line the gift box. Let's see. What do I want to do for trims? I'm kind of liking the idea still of going with the rickrack and the red, but I don't know how I'll feel about that with talk on it, stick. You stay, stick down. Not sure how I'll feel about it with my fancy carpet paper. Yeah, this was me getting myself into a corner. And you know, I think I'll save this and this. I can see this being useful on one, oh, I didn't save it out. There was a card that had like a picture of a barn um, in the snow and using that as a background with children who are maybe wearing snowsuits instead of bare feet, I think that would do the red, the rickrack and this. So I'm gonna let go of that idea. Now, here's a way I can still use rickrack. I've got the glorious, had to have come from the 60s, out of, I, this was, this has been in mom's sewing stuff for as long as I can remember. And I was born in the mid 60s, so. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. It is the glorious, got some gold in there. That's iconic. That's making me happy. Yeah, nothing says jolly mid-century holidays like glittery rickrack. So yeah, it's got this gold, if you can't see that on you can see that ha, that'll work that'll give me the iconic look I want I think I'm comfortable with leaving the bottom of the box with nothing if I do put anything on I will just put something on that covers just that bit and I could use Possibly a velvet ribbon, like this one matches into the color of what's going on on top, matches into the jammies. I could put, if I get to that point and decide it needs it, I can put velvet ribbon there. And we'll just have the whole gamut of things from the sewing room. It doesn't exactly match the dark red, but I'm, I'm comfortable with the dark red just as, you know, not being too matchy. Just a base note. It can be darker. Okay. What is that out of the way? Yes, I have 700 square feet or so of studio space, and my available working space is exactly what you're seeing on camera. <clears throat> well, okay. Across the room, there is space, but it cracks me up that I've got so much room, and I've got I've got a ping pong table out sitting over there that I can work on. And I'm right here, which of course to be on camera one has to, but this is pretty much where I work on everything. <laughs> okay, so these are dry enough to cut. Now, are they curling? Yes, they are curling. Am I worried about that? No. If I was going to do a whole bunch of these, I would do the glue ups one day. I would put these all in a book to flatten overnight, and I'd do all of you know, the cutting part another day, if I was going to like production make these, which <laughs> will never happen because I have not got the attention span for that. Um, but I did find on this, you know, in this case, I was going to curve them anyway to stand up and fit on top of this little piece. And you can also quite simply roll them in your fingers. Once you get them cut out, you can do things like this and just gently roll them back and they'll be fine. So, since I'm gonna use all of them, I'm gonna to have to bore you with cutting the whole thing out. And when I get to here, 
I'm just going to kind of wing in about what would be an arm shape there. And I may decide to cut that off and do something different, but for now that's going to go there. I'm going to I'm going to do some of the bulk cutting big with my big old scissors and then I will switch to smaller scissors and even over to the exacto knife for smaller things. Different people like to fussy cut different ways. What I find is that the handles of the large scissors are the most comfortable for my hands. And so I just have decided to go with that and cut what I can with the big scissors because in the long run, my hand is more comfortable if I end up doing a lot of cutting. It doesn't matter so much, probably the size of a project. It wouldn't even really bother me, but I've noticed that I tolerate a huge amount of small discomfort and it's kind of a, I think maybe a toxic habit to have. You get used to letting things be generally uncomfortable or slightly painful and pretty soon you realize that your whole body is suffering from not making tiny adjustments. Like right now I'm sitting in such a way that's actually putting pressure on one toe for no reason. There, move the toe. So I'm trying to notice when things are not comfortable and give myself the good self-care. I mean, I wouldn't want anybody else to be tortured with even if it's a minor discomfort, I wouldn't want anyone hanging out at the studio to have to deal with something like that. You know, a chair that's never comfortable or tools that could be better, whatever. So if I do it for somebody else, I need to do it for me. So take that as advice if you want to or not. It seems like it doesn't matter until you realize how many little aches and pains have built up in your body simply because you don't treat yourself gently. Now you'll notice I don't know, like here, I didn't try to cut in and then cut around that corner. I just cut in and then I'll come back and I'll cut up. skills would be good because we could speed some of this up or throw in some music and it's not that I have zero editing skills I do have some and I could make it happen but it is a Monday and I am expected back at the parents' house at 10 this morning to keep mama company. She has Alzheimer's, so I keep her company several days a week. And to cook their meal for today and their repeat meal for the weekend. So, I know I won't get done editing. And then I would have to come back to editing and the rest of the week is super busy. This is the video I was supposed to do yesterday, if not Saturday. <laughs> so, okay, that's in the way. Just cut that bit out. I haven't got this up here yet. This is where I will come back in in just a moment with the X-Acto knife and do a little bit of knifing. Me 
me switch over to the exacto sooner than I strictly need to. I haven't been doing a lot of it lately. I used to work in the event industry and make foam core party decorations like big um, theme parties for charity balls and things like that. So think giant size ballroom scale decorations. And I got very good at knifing things like this out where we'd mount them on foam core. And of course they'd be, you know, like life size photographs of people that we'd mount on foam core and cut out, things like that. So I may switch over and use my knifing skills to speed this up some. Or not. Craft along with me. And then you can be cutting yours out at the same time I'm cutting mine out. We'll do it in real time. And if you're not crafting along with me, you know where the fast forward button is there. You can just grab that and slide out along the bar and see where we get to doing something besides cutting things out. How about that? Just do that. Now when I'm doing cutting with the X-Acto, I may occasionally forget to follow my own rules, but you don't want your holding hand to be in front of your blade. That's the first most important thing. Second most important thing, use sharp blades. And you can use one of the long knife steels that you do the whish, whish, whish. Even if you don't really know how to do that, you can do that. You can just have one of those sitting handy and you can resharpen your blade so you don't have to change your blade nearly as often because that does get annoying and it can become costly if you're doing a lot of cutting but it makes all the difference in the world to have a sharp blade and then do things like rolling the knife in your hand I could Let's try a little zoom action here. Somebody remind me to zoom back out when I get done with this. So on cardstock, it's not as important to stay vertical if you are cutting out from foam core, unless you want a beveled edge, you want to stay very vertical and not tilt your knife. So that's a good thing to know. What else do I know about cutting things out with a knife? Notice how I just came past that. And then I'm going to come back, I'm going to put my knife in the corner and pull outwards, and then my knife in the corner and pull downwards. And that'll give me the easiest, cleanest corner. On that one, I'm going to go ahead and go around it, but when I get to here, I'm going to pull my knife out. It just depends on how sharp that corner is, and you can rotate on the point of your knife if you haven't broken the tip off yet. quieter than usual out there. It is, today is the first day that we've done the fall back with the clocks. And I did notice on the walk to the studio this morning, um, I walk over about 5.30, and I did notice this morning that there were at least twice as many lights on in houses as usual. So as much as people complain about it, I guess the one thing it does is it does make it easier for folks to get up early for at least this first week until they get used to it being the time that it is. So yeah, there were a lot more cars out. Um, yay for everybody else. Not so much yay for me. I kind of like 
walking out so early in the morning because I pretty much have town to myself. I'll occasionally see a dog walker across the street or something. But yeah, this morning there were lots of folks out. Lots of folks out. I'm all for going to pick one time and stick with it, but just say it. Oh, stay on camera here. So how long have I been off camera with doing that? <laughs> Hopefully not long. And once in a while, I do remove some details, like this little curl here. That one may just end up going away. I'll leave the bigger one on the pony, but I think I won't worry about the small one. And I'm going to just take my scissors in here for a minute. Maybe. Sometimes I can cut curves easily and sometimes not so much. So I decided on that the little tight curve to just use my scissors. And this is where if you have cuticle scissors or even, you know, fine quality paper crafting scissors of the tiny variety, you can certainly you know, use those and get super nice cuts. What I've got seems to do well enough. I have a pair of fingernail scissors, but I don't think they do any better than these, so I don't really use them. Okay, back to this bit. Staying on camera. Yes, that is one of the differences between filming for YouTube and doing like Facebook lives. On a Facebook live, usually there'd be at least one of my friends watching. And although I was horrible about um, looking up at the comments, I can't really read comments while making. That's just not one of my skills. I'm not that social. Um, I had friends who had my phone number and they would text me, hey, <laughs> pay attention. And I'd look up at the camera and realize, oh yeah, I'm holding this thing completely out of frame. Not so much so with this. And because I am on the just do it kick here, I do try to rewatch my videos, but honestly, I put myself to sleep. Doing it once is fine, doing it twice, Eh, pretty much anything is the second time around is sleep inducing so I will check I will edit if I absolutely must because I on the chance that I really left things off camera all right last bit curious how much street noise is being picked up. It's definitely downtown waking up out there. Folks showing up. Folks driving by. All right. There's that. Oops. A couple little bits down here. And now that I've cut those out so perfect, there is every possibility that like this one, if you can see in there, there is a little strip behind them because they wouldn't stand even. Of course, they're not standing at the same level. So I had to do a little strip of paper behind. And I just used the same pattern as the floor. So that very well could happen here. We'll see what I need to make them stand up, especially since they're going to be on this box. Okay, 
Now we've got to do the gently curving them back. Be careful that you don't break their little necks. And I'm going to go ahead and slide that back out. See, somebody yelled at me. Somebody from the future yelled at me, move that camera back out. There we go. Okay, thank you, whoever that was. We'll never know because now it didn't happen. Am I this weird? Yeah, I am. <laughs> hey, you never know. You just never know. It's a magical universe. Okay, they're pretty nice and straight now. And so you can see where, like, these toes do not touch the floor now. And do I want to bend their little feet? No. It seems like it should work, but they will look weird if I do that. Um, they're not drawn properly to be bent. So I am going to go ahead and make them a little strip to go behind. And I could cover some of this paper, but I don't think that's necessary. I think just a straight snippet will do. straight snippet. I'm going to cut it off at this edge. Paper cutter could be handy here, but knife and ruler are handier. So. And it doesn't have to be super tall, but I do want to fold it over, so I'll make it twice as tall as I think I want it. Won't need to be that long, actually, now that I've trimmed that. <laughs> do it straight there. Was that an actual factory edge? Yes. Okay, so there's that. Making use of the lines on this handy board because what else is it there for? And I think I'll go about an inch and a quarter so when I fold it in half, that's what? Five eighths? I just did math in my head. Actually, math is easy in the mornings. It's afternoons when math goes wonky on me. I say this, and now I'll probably do something dumb that will prove that's not the case. Now, if you have, if, the, if you're using a cardstock that has a white core to it, can you see that? Like there's white in there. Sometimes when you fold it, it will break the edge. So we shall see if this one folds okay without breaking the edge and making a white line across the top. If it does that, very likely I will just touch it up with a marker for this particular project. Okay, that'll do. Get some glue in there. Okay, so now I can center them on this and I may end up trimming the ends or whatever, but go ahead, I'll put them down here. I'll use a line on my table. If you don't have that, you can come up with other ways to see them. so I can tell where to put the glue. Now, does this in itself make a standing tab? Not really, because, and I could plan this differently, and make this so that it had one more piece that folds out behind, so it would stand up, but I have something else in mind. But just be aware that you might have wanted to do that different. Let's see, and I realized that where I drew my line is actually leaves one toe hanging out, so I'll scoot that down a bit. Okay. Now they will all stand up. His little pajama toe might just curl out from the end. Okay, so they're all going to stand up. They're going to stand on here. Now what I'm going to do, in kind of paper doll fashion, I am going to go ahead and 
been done. And of course, my glue hasn't dried, so it's, I may have to keep pressing them back onto the bottom. But this will just add, I think, a little interest. So you can see from above, now they're kind of wiggly. And that will also help on the standing them up without having to do an awful lot of structure. So there's that. I think before I glue them on, I will go ahead and cut out my tree. And my tree I'm going to be much less fussy with. Just background, just get generically around things. I've mentioned it, I'm sure I've mentioned it in other videos, but the thing that made me first fall in love with paper arts was when I was four or five years old, I think, maybe as old as six, but I don't think I was in school yet. Um, my grandparents always gave us like arts and crafts kind of gifts. My grandmother was an artist. They both liked doing crafty sorts of things, woodworking, all sorts of stuff. And one year for Christmas, I got this punch out, this paper punch out book that you punched out the figures for the nativity. And then there was lots of tab and slot kind of things. And so they were, it was basically like paper dolls, but they, um, it was paper sculpture. They came up dimensional. And I was absolutely enchanted. And, you know, the package said it was a nativity. I could sound it out. I could read quite young, so. Um, I could sound it out. I knew what it said. And so I was super excited about this. And I remember asking my dad, you know, so, do they make nativities for every holiday? Is there a nativity for every holiday? And my father, I think, got concerned that I was getting really religious. Um, when I was a child, my parents didn't say anything about their religious beliefs, but as an adult, I came to know that they're actually atheists. So um, <laughs> my father, I think, was a little concerned that, that I was like thinking of becoming a nun or something because I was really hooked on this nativity thing. But what it turned out was I thought nativity was the word for the paper art. So that's, that's my beginning in paper arts there. Okay, so I've got this towards the camera so we can see and I'm thinking what's gonna look good is yeah sort of them to one side this to this side so you've got something a whole scene going on here and I think spacing wise from above it'll be something like that so on this piece and again this is before the can came into being part of it, which I can't completely take it off. I kind of wish I hadn't glued it onto the top of the can, but I did. On this piece, because I had the depth of the ribbon spool, I used a popsicle stick and cut a notch and glued the popsicle stick onto the back of here. It's hiding under some nice ribbon to cover it up, um, but that's there and it's sticking down into there and it glues to the inside of the ribbon spool right there. And I just used an exacto to cut an, a notch and put that through. So that is one way to make your taller elements in back stand up. On this one, 
because I'm doing it on the top of a box that I want to be able to open and use for other things, that's not going to happen. So I think what I'll do, let's see, I've got my kids kind of curved. I think I will take advantage of the fact that trees are conical and see about doing yeah, something like that. So if you get a little bit of a curve, that's going to give it some structure. And then I am going to use a bit of this paper a snip to the length that this is. And I'll cut that top edge. Either you want to cut it super neat or you want to cut it sort of decorative. Um, so I'm not really catching my heartstrings for sort of decorative, but I'm going to do it anyway. Probably it would be better to just cut it neat, but okay. And I'm going to glue this to the bottom here with an overhang. Did I put glue paper down? No, I didn't. Am I going to be careful not to go off the edge? Yes, I am. Did I just go off the edge? Yes, I did. Okay, so I'm going to glue this on here with, I'll flip this over in a moment, but I'll set this here. And you can see just by my guide marks on my work surface. Okay, so there's this much of a little bit of an overhang there. Okay, this, oh, a squeaky chair, <laughs> vinyl upholstery. One of these days I will recover these chairs and then that way every time I move it doesn't squeak. So then I'm just cutting little notches. You probably did this on a million projects before, but in case paper arts have not been a lifelong passion, there's that, cutting notches and then I'm folding it back. Okay, now if I was leaving it straight, that could end up floppy really quick, but that's where doing this curve bit comes in. Down, get back down there. It's trying to, it slid up a little bit. It's decided it's going to slide up on me. It's okay, I can handle that. I can simply trim this off. Hopefully there's nothing on there. Be careful not to trim the paper you just glued on. I'm just trimming this where it's decided not to sit right at the edge. There, okay. I did that when I did the curve. Now I could use something to roll it around a bit. The other thing you can do, and this is going to be just off camera, but I can run it over the edge of my table and get a little bit of a curve going that way. It would have been easier to have done that before my tabs came into play. I'm just going to keep working it just a little bit with my fingers. And this is one of the cases in which it's not bad if your glue is still slightly damp because it softens those paper fibers up and they bend easy. So it's got a bit of a curve to it. I want to do this really gently because I don't want to accidentally really crease it in a way that I don't like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue that on by just putting glue on these guys. And if you haven't seen me do this before, or with my glue, you may notice that quite often I don't put the cap on. With Eileen's Tacky, it, once you've used some of the glue out of the bottle, it doesn't tend to run out. Um, but also leaving it on its side, even you know, 
with putting the lid on. Leaving it on its side means your glue stays ready. Just a handy little tr trick I use. Um, I do sometimes also keep it in its jar. It usually lives in its jar point down. Okay, there's this. And it's wanting to lean forward a little bit. So before this totally dries, I'm going to do this still. Yeah, no. No. I could have curved these ends up just slightly, and that would make it lean back a little bit more. I would prefer that it did, but it doesn't want to, so I'm not going to force it. So I'm going to stick it down. This end tab is going to be sticking over a little bit. I'll deal with that in a moment. And I'm just going to press this in. And I'm kind of using my fingernails. Popsicle stick may come in handy here. And again, I'm taking advantage of the fact that the glue has the paper fibers dampened and it, it can sculpt them in ways beyond just two-dimensional paper. Um, it can actually stretch them a little bit and that's helping me get this to lean back. I'm pushing this forward. So if you use plenty of glue, you'll have that option to work it around a little bit. And then just trim off that little tidbit there. That little tidbit is not enough to matter. And then that blends in plenty nice enough from behind. You could have, I could have covered the whole back of that with the same paper. Doesn't feel like it matters to me. And then I'm going to press this down some because it keeps wanting to slide up. Now, now that I trimmed that extra bit off, now it slid up and it wants its extra bit back. Never going to see it. Blends right in. Not worried about it. Okay, and then for the kids. And this is where I do want to curve their little heads back and their little necks back. And I'm really giving it support as I'm doing that so that I don't, you know, break their little necks. If that happens, you can always glue them to another piece of cardstock and firm them back up again. You can even go so far as to glue flat toothpicks in behind um, if that really is a concern. So there's that. And then I'm going to go ahead and let's see. I think I will fold these back because I may end up wanting to use these as part of the support. So I'm going to go ahead and fold them down at an angle. I might end up cutting them off, but for now, I'm going to leave myself the option of using that as a little engineering tactic. Okay. Again, if this was a closed in surface and not a gift box I want to open, I could put a little glue behind here to hold those firm and then cut slots for these tabs and slot them down in. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put a little glue back there. Pinching. Pinch, 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 pinch. Okay. And again, if there are things you do not need to sit here and watch, you can hit that slide bar and jump forward to the next bit. You are in charge of fast forward. Okay. Got that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, ideally, I would let that sit for just a little longer. This is also a spot where you could start getting into the hot glue. 
And then I'm going to put just, and this I wouldn't try to do hot glue on this sharp of an edge because you'll just end up with boogers. But I'm just going to very, very lightly tap just the littlest bit of glue along here. I'm using my fingers and I'm kind of pulling down and away and then wiping my fingers off between. And this is just to kind of take out some of the extra. I want a tiny bit of glue along this edge to catch where it can, but I don't want it to be blobby enough to be seen. I don't like little shiny spots. And so then, see from above what I'm doing I'm kind of getting them in a in an arrangement I like the way that having them arranged that way I don't know that it shows so much on camera but it adds it it adds some movement to the piece it keeps it from being no static it adds movement it's not static um, I just like the way that it enhances that. I think over here, tiny detail, but I don't like how straight that is on the end. I'm going to go ahead and would this have been ideal to have done before gluing it on? Yes, but did I do it? No. And now I want it off of there. And it's going to be tricky because my scissors don't want to get in there. And it's got, this is where damp cardstock is tricky to cut and should have waited till later. There. But that makes me happier, just that little bit. Just so it doesn't look so on the edge. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's get some ribbons and trims on here and wrap this video up. So I'm going to go ahead and measure out enough to go around. And this I am going to switch over to hot glue at this point. And my paper scissors are sharp enough. I'll cut most of that just fine. And I'm going to want that to end up. out of my way. Just hit some hot glue. I'm going to go along the top edge and the bottom edge because I don't want it to be floppy on here. The other glue that would work well at this point would be Fabri-Tac. Um, and that's actually probably ideally what I would like to be doing here, but in the interest of speed, I'm just going to go ahead and use the glue gun. just up to the top edge. Yeah, I would like this slightly better. If it was fabric tacked I can feel the texture of the glue, but I am going to put another layer of trim over the top, so that won't really matter. If you're not familiar with fabric tack uh, that would be fabric tack but I highly recommend get these get the minis. And in fact, since I didn't think I had a mini handy, which is why I didn't switch over to it, yeah, I'm going to switch to Fabri-Tac. Because Fabri-Tac is my favorite for when it comes to gluing trims and things. Until there's still plenty of glue in there. Okay, maybe I'm not switching over because do I have a pin handy to poke this tip? I do not, I don't think. Wait, trims. Trims have pins. None of the trims I have handy have pins. And I looked back here for a pin for something else. Just new, new, new. What else do I have? I have, uh, I have a needle tool from Sculpting. Okay, there's a pin.
area. Come on, Babbertack. Let's switch over because it wouldn't take me any longer, but if you're going to be difficult, I'll go back to hot glue. Fine, it's going to be difficult. I am not going to fuss with that at the moment. Fabri-Tac is my favorite. If it's fresh, if your container is open before you're trying to show somebody else what to do with it, it's very handy. At the moment, it's not being handy, so it can go sit and time out. I'll probably bring it back out for the Rick Rack, but maybe not. If you manage to stick your ribbon down quick enough, you can smooth out most of those hot glue ridges anyway. And then just make sure that my end gets the glue too. And of course I'm ending on the back if I were to accidentally muck it up and end on the front. I would simply put a button or a bow or something like that. Now see, this is where hot glue lets us down sometimes. I didn't get things on quick enough and now I've got that going on. Yeah, I don't hate when things muck up on camera because then you get to deal with them and then everybody knows that there's nothing that's so tragic that it can't be fixed. Since this is getting glued right back over the top of, I don't care if it rips up some of the paper, but what I do want to do is get that ridge out of there because there's enough ridginess going on without adding to it. So fine. Thank you very much, hot glue. All right. And then back to Fabri-Tac, and I'm going to risk the hot glue some more. I'm back to fabric tech. So they have, using two hands, I can get it to squeeze out. Yeah, fabric tech either is really hard to get out or it turns itself into a volcano, which is part of why I recommend these little tubes instead of the bottles. Also, the bottles, unless you're using a ton of fabric tech, um, like doing a production project or something, the bottles tend to dry out before you use more than half of them. So even though it costs more to buy it in the minis, although something, there was a place called Jewelry Supply, oh geez, I don't remember. Anyway, I did just find it for like a dollar twelve per tube, which yes, for the volume of glue is expensive but that is cheap for buying it by the small tube. That was a bargain. So I just ordered a bunch. But yeah, if you want to look for it online, just look for Fabri-Tac minis, and I'm sure you will see that different sellers have it different, um, in different quantities of tubes but all different prices. Ah, yes, good old fabric tech. That actually makes me much happier because here this is very smooth. It doesn't have the ridginess that I can feel from the hot glue. And again, I'm putting rickrack over the top. It's not going to matter. So I'm going to trim some of that excess off, make this one nice and neat. Ribbon is another one of my early loves. Um, my dad could buy, tie the most perfect bows. And that to me was just like, I don't know why, it was a thing. It was like perfect alphabet lettering in first grade, perfect bows, like that neat sharpness was a really big deal. And that stayed with me into my 30s. Everything had to be really precise. Um, and now I've loosened up, and I really prefer things not so precise. I just I think things look better when they look more organic, more natural. Okay, let's see. I'm going to want enough of this to go around. 
So I'm adding a layer over the top. Now, if I was using a really decorative ribbon, I might not even care about doing two layers, but with wanting to use the riprap, then of course I didn't use a fancy schmancy ribbon underneath. Just making sure that none of those little bits I'm seeing on there is anything important. And with old rickrack, quite often you have that sort of wonkiness where it doesn't lay flat and you're gonna wanna do a take your time thing and hit all the tips. And this is where, this is where I may switch back to hot glue cause the Fabri-Tac is gonna to want to string between each one. And even with hot glue, it's a bit of a fiddly process. Let's see, is it coming up and back about right? Yeah. Don't want to glue boogers. Okay. What I did on this other one was I very carefully touched hot glue to each of the points. I'm not going to worry as much about that here. I think I can get away for the most part with just getting the top point and just doing a few at a time. Because even as slow as this is, it was the fastest way I found to do it. How fast is not always important, but in the interest of not making you fast forward through too much of this video, And I'm probably not supposed to tell you to forward through the videos because that probably like means that it doesn't count for algorithm or whatever, like numbers of views matter on YouTube in order to get your video out and seen more, which does matter to me, but I'm not monetized or anything, so whatever. <laughs> Whoever sees it, sees it. Whoever plays along, plays along. So yeah, I'm just doing three or four of the points at a time. lovely hot glue curls. Little spider webbies. And I will mention, you know, this is a professional strength heat hot glue gun. If you have troubles with hot glue and you're using one of those little mini low temp guns, that is probably your biggest problem. You know, yes, they don't burn your fingers as easily or as badly, but they also don't they don't melt the glue as well in my experience and quite often let me put the lid back on this. Quite often they um They seem to use, for some of them, not all of them, but some of them seem to have, like, the glue itself is just different. It's not the same as the bigger glue sticks. And I don't know that for a fact, but it seems to not be quite the same thing when it rehardens. So if you've wanted to use a glue gun, but that's been your experience with a mini glue gun, and you think that's just how it is, it's mini glue guns, or that's how they are. And that's a generic statement. There are probably mini glue guns that are much better, um, but pay attention in that case when you're out and about and buying, you know, low temp is probably not 
your best friend. All right, we're getting there. Almost there. Will it really take you this long to make one of these? Probably not. You know, the video is as long as it is, but you're not going to have to explain or be compelled to explain. Not that I had to, but, you know, all the other options and things like that. So the project does not take as long as the video seems to indicate it would. To maybe do a little, a little trim there. Was that a good idea? Maybe not. There. That would have been a good spot for sharp little sewing scissors to trim that rather than that. Pick that off. Okay. I am liking this so far. How do I feel about that bright white bottom? I think I'm feeling fine about that little tiny strip of bright white bottom. When it's sitting like on a countertop, you're barely gonna see it. Again, I could pop in. Do I care about this? I might care. Let's see. It is gonna be a little bit harder to get that ribbon overhang to go past it. Bottom. Uh, no, I like it with a bright white. Just adds a little, little bit of pep to it. So there we've got that. Now, I think I'm going to want to add a couple of buttons. So I've got my button jar of premium buttons, the really good ones. Things that are especially adorable. this button simply because it looks a little bit like the wheels on the little train back there it kind of catches in with that I think I won't use any shank buttons on this one if I'm gonna put the buttons on the front if I put the buttons up top I can use some shank things and glue them Of doing a little visual decision making here. And I may also want some white or some green. And I'm borderline on not even caring too much about the buttons because it's pulled away a little bit from the whole because I've gone for the square box rather than a ribbon spool. That's kind of cute, but I think I will save this button for a pattern that is more 60s era. Um, play with the iconic look of that. So as I was saying, I've kind of gotten away from the sewing room kind of look to it a little bit by going with this box instead of the ribbon spool. So I just borderline on not sure if I care about the buttons, but I think I do still want them in there. And I think, like this one has the bow going. Do I want a bow? Something here. Something down here. I think I'm gonna do Maybe even just Let's see. There are a few ways to make bows. I find that for projects like this, actually tying them tends to not be the best to trim the ends till I do something else. In this case, 
I think the easiest thing to do, if one has not buried one's clippers and wire. There we go. Florist wire, clippers. And I will say on this piece, when I was gluing down the buttons, because I was seeing if I could do it without hot glue, I did use florist wire through the shanks of these two buttons, the shank buttons. I used florist wire through the shank um, and made little, you know, put it through. Let's show you what I did. I put it through and made it about that long, like an inch and a quarter, inch and a half long, and twisted up a nice little tight thing. And then I poked a hole into this again because this isn't open and that this isn't going down into a box I poked a hole and popped it in with some glue holding the button somewhat in place but the florist wire going inside to hold them in just because I didn't completely trust that something like tacky glue would stay stuck to the plastic on this button I did just use the glue I figure enough of it comes up into the holes that it will hold it but if you want to back up your glue with something, wiring things up is never a bad idea. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to decide about how big I want this bow to end up being. And right now it's very flat, but I'm not worried about that. I'll go a little bit smaller. And then I'm just going to pinch pleat it in the center I'm going to wrap this piece of wire around it. So you can end out there. Smooch it up. Wrap the wire. Before you pull the wire really, really tight, make sure that it's where you want it to be. over, twist. Okay, now I can arrange that bow however I want it. And I'm going to go ahead and trim the wire off. Now it's tempting to go, okay, and now I'm going to add something else using wire, so I'll just use the same wire. It seems to work better if you cut it, use a fresh piece of wire, like if I want to put one of these over the top of that, fresh wire there. Um, in this case, what I may do is grab a snippet of any other ribbon to cover that wire up. I can do that. We'll see if it needs it. Let's figure out what else is going on here. I think, what happened to that? What happened to the one that looked like the wheel? It's gotta be sitting right here. Yep, there it is. Do I want that one in the middle? Yeah. It's got this rubbed off gold. It kind of picks up the gold that's in here. It kind of picks up the shapes from over there. It's vague. It makes me happy. Am I gonna want some extra buttons in there? This one, I may just settle for one button and I think I will wire it right onto there. In the interest of time, I'm gonna stop at wire at what I would probably do if I wasn't trying to just get this finished up before everybody falls asleep. What I might do would be to take some um, embroidery floss. But that's gonna look nice enough. I can be fine with that. 
I say. <laughs> Check back with me later. I probably will have added some embroidery floss there. Just because if you're going to have buttons with buttonholes, just fill them in with something. Okay, and in this case, I am going to not worry about needing to poke that through to make it stick because I am using hot glue. Just press that down and trim my ends. Now here's something I like to do with my ends. Instead of just cutting a straight cut, which looks perfectly nice, I kind of like to do a little bit of a curve on mine. There, come on, fold neatly in half. And then just a hair longer than that. When I cut it, I like to just kind of curve the cut. And I just think that makes it just a slightly prettier end. Tiny detail. Might not matter to anybody else. But again, just kind of swooping right up there. So I've got that. Stick that on there. Kind of feeling like it still needs something else. What I did on this one, I felt like it still needed something else, so I added rickrack. I added the rickrack after the bow. If you try to put the rickrack on when you're making the bow, part of it ends up around on the wrong side on one of your tails. Your rickrack's going to be on the back instead of the front. So I just cut small pieces and glued on afterwards. So if you decided you wanted to enhance your bow, you would cut pieces slightly bigger than this little scraplet that I have sitting here, but you would do that and glue them on after. Do I think this bow needs it? Nah, I think that's weirdness. I'm not gonna do it. So I'm gonna stick some hot glue there and stick this here and then get all the hot glue fuzzies out. So there you have a sweet little gift box that is also a decoration that can come out year after year until it gets squished, although we have paper ornaments from the 60s that we still put on our tree every year. Okay, they're a bit battered, but they're still pretty nice. So there's that. I might want to fiddle and add a couple more buttons now that I've got that glued on. some others in there. Oh, that's kind of sweet. Okay, I'm going to glue a few more on. And then I will give you a quick rundown about the cocoa container because there is one thing you might want to know if you are going to do one like this that sits on top of a cocoa container. I did run into an issue of trying to stick things on the top of those flexible, not actually as flat as you think they are, plastic tops. Oh, I'm buttoning and I can't stop. I think one flat on the front, but it would have to be the right button. There goes one on the floor. like this with some nice red thread still through it. Let's see. There's a few in here that I get cut off. Ah, white thread. That one. No. I'm very picky about these things. It's got to be the right sheen 
<laughs> the right size. That one's kind of appealing, but I think it's probably way too big. And the shank doesn't work for sticking out here. Oh, I'll call it done. That's enough of that. Let's call that done. So you could have a whole grouping of these. You could do just one, but you could do a grouping, especially if you use them, you know, same era patterns. But how cute are those? And again, they don't take nearly as long to make as it takes me on these videos to do because I have to ramble and sidetrack and show you other things. Like, one thing to know about the cocoa cans on these lids, there's quite a lip. And if you try to just put a piece of scrapbook paper on there and cover all the way out to this outer rim, it's not gonna lay flat. So in that case, I did use um, some heavier, hang on, just about to drop pliers on the floor. That was gonna be loud. I've got some mat board. You can buy this in large sheets, but if you're lucky, you can convince them to sell you some small scraps at any framing place. And even though we're a small town, we do have a framing store. Um, they sold me some small ones. My aunt, who used to do watercolors, gave me some. So some thicker mat board and with good scissors, although I won't use my very best paper scissors, my very favorite ones, um, I will use my junk scissors, but they're good quality junk scissors that I use. They're junk because I use them for cutting everything. Um, using your compass, that's why I said it might be handy to have one. You can get the measurement, get this set up to the size you need. Dun -dum 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 -dum. Out to here. Cut this piece and glue this in, and that will make that level with this next ridge and then you can put your paper down. You'll still have this little bit of black plastic rim at the top, most likely. That is where I glued rickrack over the edge. A um, little tiny bit of it shows, but I didn't mind that at all. I usually like to have a little bit of black in most of my projects anyway, so that was fine. But that was just one little trick that I realized made a big difference in how nice the top looked when it was done. So. Go forth and make. Have a fabulous week. Be sure and take some time out for making fun things. Make a little magic. Let me know if you try this project. I would love to know about it. Um, you can, let's see, I don't, you know, I don't do a lot with social media. You can find me on Facebook the Briarwood Imagiporium, I have a business page. You can also find my personal page um, at the time that I'm filming this, should that ever change, um, you know. Right now, people who know me personally and love me <laughs> watch my videos if I'm lucky. <laughs> I think there's a few folks I haven't met who've been watching them, but um, should it get out of hand, I might private my personal page but for now you can find me Don Marie Delara on Facebook and no they won't capitalize or punctuate my name correctly but you'll figure it out so go forth make pretty things bye yeah I say bye gotta find the mouse to find the cursor there we go now I'm gone <laughs>